Welcome back to another episode of Level Up Your Game. My name is Rip and I'm joined by MYK and Bobino. And we're going to continue on with our basics of Tekken. And this time we're going to dig a little bit deeper into defense. So last time we showed you some of the basic Yomi, showed you some of the basic throw breaks, low parry, crush system, etc. This time around we're going to go into a little bit more advanced movement, you know, Korean back dashing, back sways, etc. And we're also going to talk about how to get up off the ground correctly and talk a little bit about the reversal system as well as a bunch of other stuff. So kick back, relax, and get ready to level up your game. So basically, I'm gonna start talking about homing moves. But first off, before we go into that, uh, let's try to think of homing moves as a type of tool you can use to restrict your opponent from moving around. So in a 2D concept, it could be kind of like similar to an anti-air. Like let's say a character jumps in at you, and then you uppercut him for jumping in, or it's any kind of anti-air kind of move. In a 3D game like Tekken. And there's not that much jumping around, but rather sidestepping left and right. So instead of letting them sidestep all day freely, you want to use a homing move to track them. Uh, homing moves in Tekken, since Tekken 6, they have this white streak on them that you'll notice like with uh, Forest Law's back four right here. It has a complete white streak letting, indicating that it's a homing move. So it's going to track 100% no matter what. And that's pretty much about it. Let's demonstrate. Can't step it. Where are you going? Wah -bam. Wah -bam. Wah -bam. Okay, so both directions, 100%. What if I go this way? No. <laughs> what about what that? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that's basically what a homing move is. So it's going to track and it's going to restrict them from moving around left and right from side stepping. Every character has its homing move. Uh, of course, every character has a specific homing move. Some might have the same if they're similar to another character. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Cool. So homing moves are kind of like a zoning tool in 3D games? So yeah, homing move basically can be used as a zoning tool. Um, basically, you want to keep your character away, and faster homing moves can do just that. And if you're using it for sidestep purposes or catching their sidestep, uh, obviously they can't sidestep around you. And Law, for example, has a really fast one, uh, back four right here, and he has a slower one that has more range as well. But as you can notice, like you know, the characters. They're going to have to go back and forth rather than left and right. So he's not going to get in in this zone, uh, but it's kind of slow. That's the only problem. Right. So there are other tools you can use other than that when you're forcing them to play this game of no sidesteps while you're using your homing moves correctly. Um, so you're forcing them to come in, they want to attack, then you have other moves such as like standing four. Yeah, like keep out moves, basically. Yeah, keep out moves. It's like. Um, it's kind of like sticking a move out just to be like, hey, don't come near me. Um, this is this is what I got. And right. on counter hit, you know, we have a benefit of it as well. Counter hit, it'll give them a flow, and he could lock and follow with a full combo. A lot of characters have something like this. Magic four. Steve has a back one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a bunch of characters with a different kind of keep out moves. You just have to find out what your own character has. But we have other tools as well, like uh, let's say they try to come in from a distance with jabs and you know, down forward two has a slight high crush window. Yeah, a lot of down forward twos have a good uh, high crush window. So it's like, especially when people are coming in at them. Yeah, and this is also part of another Yomi layer that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're keeping them out with a magic four, which is a high. Um, it's called magic four because it's just a term that Tekken players use. Because it's, it's so like, easy. It's, it's like easy, magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like easy magic four and on counter eight you get a full combo. Mm -hmm. uh, so once they start coming in looking for that magic four, since it's a high, they can start coming in and ducking right outside the range of it and then trying to punish you from that. Exactly. So it's like sometimes, you know, you, you have to throw out a mid to keep them out. Sometimes it has, doesn't even have to be a launcher, you know. You could use back four again. Mm -hmm. You could use back one. And this is totally character dependent. You can find out what works for you. Um, we have other tools like Mishima's have electrics, which are amazing. Um, yeah, I think you have a Mishima actually. Oh, yeah, we too. do have a Mishima. Oh, hey, Aji, what's up, man? <laughs> Sweet. Oh! 
So yeah, if Bob were dashing in and back and forth trying to get in right now, you know, he may just get caught if he has to throw out electrics. Yeah, but that's also the thing too, is also you have to know the character. It's like, since it's a high, you don't want to... Right, you, you could dash in and duck. It's like a dash in and yeah, get right in front of it. Yeah, it's like dashing in again on a Magic 4, except this Magic 4 is a regular hit launcher rather right. than a counter hit launcher. And like we're talking about that being a Yomi layer, like if that starts happening enough, you know, Mike can use like a Twin Fist and down forward one two with Heiachi or something. Yeah, Bob like can confirm it and right. just yeah. get big 41 damage off him, you know, stuff like that. So it's basically, you're forcing your opponent to play this constant mind game of moving back and forward, left and right. And at the same time, there you have to keep them in check and be like, "Look, I have these tools. I'm gonna keep you out. Don't come in." Into my <laughs> <laughs> if you go in, you're gonna get hit by a combo. So that's the threat yeah. right. that you want to avoid. Cool. So that covers homing moves and as you know, in general, and as a zoning tool as well. Um, so let's go ahead now and switch gears a bit and talk about the throw break system. We touched on it in the first episode, but I want to go into a little bit more detail this time. Show them some side throws and back throws and talk about that whole system in general, Bob. All right. All right, so now we're going to talk about grabs. Like we mentioned in the first episode, uh, taking the buttons correspond to limbs. Mm -hmm. So you have your, you know, your left punch, your right punch, your left kick, and your right kick, also known as one, two, three, and four. To initiate a left grab, it's going to be uh, left punch, left kick, or one plus three. So when you execute that, you'll see that his arm, his left arm, comes out. Right, and since his left arm is coming out forward, it's actually going to be a left punch to break that grab as well. Exactly. So in order to break a left hand grab, it's going to be the, you have to push one or the left punch. You notice cool. a little break animation. So to do a uh, right grab, it's gonna be right punch and right kick, or two plus four. You can notice here, his right arm will come out, trying to do a right grab. So now we'll show a break. Right, because if the right arm is coming out forward, it's actually gonna be the right punch to break that grab. Exactly. And there's wow. the animation. Yeah, now, yeah. And before you go on, uh, just so you know that uh, Tekken characters always stand, or usually stand, other than the bears, with the uh, left hand forward, generally facing them. So it's like, if you're on one P, you just look for the left arm extending. On two P, it's going to look slightly different because the back side is showing the game. Right. So just keep But it's still like the forward arm or the back arm. Yeah, but it's, it's some, you know, some people getting into the game that might not know. Like, and oh, yeah, if you're looking for loses, any you know, kind like, of arm went off, really, so, <laughs> what's going on here? Right. I know. I try to visualize myself like in front of the character, like which arm is coming out first, so I know how to grab. Yeah, it, I think I'm pretty. I think I'm not used to seeing forward arm, back arm. Like that's what my mind processes now when I think of left punch, right punch. All right. So now, now we're gonna move on to uh, well, one both hands. One plus two, or using both of your hands to do a grab. Uh, each character in this game, there's no generic one plus two grab. It's kind of specific depending on which character. So for uh, for prototype Jack, it's going to be up forward one plus two, or you know left punch and right punch. Mm. Kind of drills him in the chest. You'll, you'll notice when you execute that grab that both arms come out. And so 99% of the time in this game, when you see this coming out, that means it's a one plus two to break the grab. Right. And a little bit later, we'll show you a rare you know, case where that's Yeah, we can just show right now because you have King as All your right. teammate. So you'll see here with King, if you back it real quick. So this is, if you see both hands coming out, that is actually uh, that is actually a one break to break. Right. It's called a giant swing. Mm -hmm. It has four characters in this game that have that grab. Yeah, it's a very special case. Not a lot of characters have this where you see both arms come forward, but it's actually just right. a one break. Right. So Mike, you want to stay back. So you'll see here that that is actually a one break. It looks like both hands are coming out. But you see how fast he how, how fast he moves. You kind of know as you play the game more, you'll know that that's the giant swing. Because here's a normal looking one plus two grab. Uh, it looks a little different. Looks really similar to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of steps forward. Okay. Well, I think people get the point of that. Sure. Let's uh, go ahead and move on though to forward grabs. So uh, there's another way to uh, you know initiate a grab with your opponent uh, if they're a little far away by pushing forward and the either one plus three or two plus four. You can't do those with the command throws. Yeah, so the only time you can do a forward grab is with the forward 1 plus 3 or forward 2 plus 4. Uh, it's a little bit slower, but again, you're uh, you know much farther away before you, you initiate the grab, so you can kind of you know catch them off guard. So forward grabs also have a little bit of a longer startup, but they also are basically home moves because they will track your opponent. Right. So let's bring in King, there we go. And we'll see Law will do 1, 2, 3 on block, and then he'll try his regular grab, but King can sidestep it. And he'll do 1, 2, 3 on a forward grab, and you'll see that King cannot sidestep it. Exactly. This is another tool you have to worry about. We have the forward grab. So again, a little bit slower startup, but definitely it's a good tool to uh, catch your opponent. Cool. 
Cool, so let's go ahead and move on to side grabs. All right, so now we're gonna talk about side grabs. And so the way you initiate a side grab is by going to the side of your opponent. And regardless of which grab you do, whether it's one plus three or two plus four, uh, it's gonna do the grab based on what side. Interesting. Yeah, instead of the grab, it's more about what side they're on. I see, and that depends on what to break it as well as what throw I imagine you're gonna get. All right, so the way you break a side grab is regardless of which grab you do, whether it's one plus three or two plus four. Or uh, one plus two. Or one plus two is you break it based on what side you're on. So if I'm forced this left side, I'll do a two plus four grab, but you'll still break it by pushing one because that's what side you're on. So now. Right, so left side, left punch to break. Yeah, right side, right punch. Let me show you the uh, right grab. Oh go. my gosh. <laughs> bad boy. There you go. I've been a bad boy. And that's, okay. that's it for side grabs. So now let's move on to back grabs. Right. Uh, back grab is initiated by going completely behind your opponent. Which is really difficult to do in Tekken, by the way. Just just saying. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not often you get... There's some setups here and there, but generally you're not going to get many back grabs in this mm -hmm. game. But it is or rewarding. Usually, like when they mess up a combo, you tech roll. Right. Yeah, it's right. Like so why don't we uh, go ahead and see uh, Forest Law's uh, back grab. Yeah, this is a different animation martial, so people might want to check it out. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, the thing about back grabs is that they're completely unbreakable. Yeah. So, no matter what you hit, 1, 2, or 1 plus 2, you're not going to get out of these back grabs. Oh, and another thing we should mention about the throw system is that you cannot mash out inputs. The first input during the throw break window is the one that's going to count. So right. you can't try rolling 1 to 2, or 2 to 1, or 2 buffered 1 to 1 plus 2, whatever. It's whatever the system accepts as the first, you know, right. rotation. Right. Basically, basically, the way you can visualize it is when the throw animation touches your body, right. whatever your next button input is at that point is going to be the one that's going to count yeah. towards the throw break. Cool? Yeah. So, Alright, so now we're going to talk about throw extensions. So, uh, certain characters in this game, you can initiate a grab, then you can do additional inputs to, you know, extend the grab for, you know, more damage. And more hits, basically. More hits or more damage, or for positioning purposes, it, it just, it depends on the character. So, uh, for P-Jack, here is this up forward 1 plus 2 grab, and this is what it looks like when you do it by itself. He just drills them and throws them. But Instead, what you can do is after you initiate that grab, mm -hmm. if you do, I think it's a half circle forward and right punch, you'll initiate like a uh, an extension shown there. So it's way different, but it's, you know, it's but you have to do it after the initial up four one plus two grab. Right, and so some extensions you can there are escapes for them. Like you can either block that one or you could um, throw break out of it. Right, but right. other extensions you can't at all. Like for example, Forest Law has his bulldog grab. Oh, and it's got the running bulldog extension. Yeah, this is the regular bulldog though, and then the running bulldog. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one you cannot escape at all. Just the initial throw break window that you have a chance to escape it. So all these are really character specific um, examples. Yeah. But uh, like certain characters like King have multi throws where there are multiple parts that are, that are breakable in between. Right, so yeah. King has essentially, I think, if, if, depending on which one you do, five throws at throw one. Within a throw within a <laughs> within throw. It's Inception throwing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here's an, uh, let's show an example of a multi grab with King. Wow, well, you actually here. know it. Oh yeah. Oh, and he knows the escape. <laughs> oh my god. So what King can do is uh, that was actually different inputs at each section. Well, you got you should, you I got, got an escape <laughs> artist. Like, you got an escape artist. <laughs> and so, like Mike showed, you can actually break it because King can do different grabs at different parts of the multi grab. Right. And so the, your opponent has to know, uh, kind of guess which one you're going to do next exactly. to break it. So let's do a different one. Oh. And so that is, you know, that's part of multi grab. That was two parts. And if I you do could it break again, the first initial grab, and you could also break the extension. So right. Multi. So that's breaking the extension. Nice. So that was two grabs. I got the first part, which where I broke his arm the first mm -hmm. time, and then he <laughs> and then he uh, he like, recovered no. very well. And then, but, <laughs> it turned out okay. But he pushed me away. It was good to go. So. Cool. So I think that about covers most of the generic grab system, as well as some character specific examples. But this is a tag game, so let's go ahead and show them some tag throw stuff. All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about generic tag throws. The way you execute this is by pushing the right punch and the tag button, or two plus five. And the way you uh, break these is by pushing the right punch or the two grab. Right. Regardless of who is your team, it's always going to be the same. And this is how it looks like a right grab. When you push it, your teammate will come in. Mm -hmm. and let's go ahead and show the escape for that as well. Oh, it's all oh. crazy! <laughs> and the interesting thing too is in solo mode, you can actually still break those grabs when you just have a solo character, but it's just a generic generic break, like the old school Tekken yeah. games. And another thing about the attack uh, throws is that it will take away your opponent's red health. 
when you execute it. So regardless of how much red health they have, it'll take all of it out. Right, and you can see there is flashing. Crash Bomb will cover the health, but you know, it will take, it, it will take it away, yeah. So now in this game also we have a specific team throw. So depending on, uh, there's certain combinations of characters, whether they really like each other or hate each other, mm -hmm. they have specific throws. So I have on my team Elisa and Jack, and this is what one of their attack throws looks Whoa, like. Oh, so strong! And you got backward. You know, actually really funny, really quickly about the allegiances between Elisa and Jack. Elisa likes Jack, but Jack does not like Elisa. Yeah. So, I, but they're both slept throws, throws with one another. So let's go ahead and show the, yes, the Jack and Elisa one. All right, so now we're going to show Jack initiating the, the uh, specific attack throw. Oh! Wow. Yeah, and I think you have uh, Marshall and Steve. Let's show Steve's 2 plus 4 with Tag. I'm pretty sure that's their team one. Oh! <laughs> didn't see that coming, did you? I saw a to let it kick. They got to see it again, okay. Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Did you get a bind? Did you get a combo? Wait a minute. Oh! Oh, man. oh the best of friends, man. These guys are the best of friends. Alright, so I think that covers most of the tactile system and the regular system as well. It, yeah. Let's go ahead and Mike and move on to the advanced movement. Korean back dashing, sways, back sways, crouch dashes. And wave dashes. Why not? Bomb. Let's do it. Alrighty, so in the first episode, we talked a little bit about the basic movement of the game. You know, and we showed you how to safely back dash, which just back hold back. This time around, though, Mike's going to show you a lot of stuff. So these are more of the advanced um, movement techniques in the game. So we're going to talk about Korean back dashing. We're going to talk about sways, back sways, crouch dashes, and wave dashes as well. So, Mike, take it away. So, as we discussed in the first episode, the proper way to back dash by itself without canceling is by doing back hold back. And this method is the safest way to backdash, but it also is the slowest. As you can see here, Heihachi doesn't really go back that far that fast. But there is another method to backdashing faster, and we call this Korean backdash canceling, or just backdash canceling. Uh, it kind of originated in Korea back in Tag 1 days, or maybe before that. Uh, it's a quicker way to evade away from your opponents trying to get in on you. So let's try to demonstrate it here. And as you can see, it's much faster. And so what's the notation for that, Mike? So, the, the most proper way to do it, but the, personally, the way I do it, I'll explain it differently, but um, the most proper way to do it is the first back dash, you have to initiate it with back back no matter what. Mm -hmm. So you do back back, and then you do a neutral, down back, then back, down back, and then back, down back, 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 down back, 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 okay. down back, back, repeat. And in between those back, down, back, back, there's a neutral each time? You don't have to. It's, it's just not technically like a Mishima wave dash yet. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that later. So you could kind of just, so the sloppier way or an easier way you could do it, don't get discouraged by me using the word sloppy, but <laughs> you could also use back, quarter circle back, back, quarter circle back, back, quarter circle back, back, quarter circle back. As well. Right, but even with that, you have to start with the back, back at first. Yes. Let me say that again. Back, back. Course go back, back. Course go back, back. Course go back, back. Course go back, back. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's cool. it's a weird way to describe it in English, but <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot more sense when you're just doing it. Yeah, and also you notice like the fact that if you're trying to do it really fast, you're taking small steps and you're just making your arm tired. So there, is, the character has a certain length that they can back dash when you don't cancel it with the crouch, because that's essentially what you're doing with the back dash cancel. You're crouching for a split second when you're going for down back, and then you're going to another back dash animation again. Right, so this is why this is generally a little bit unsafer, because if somebody has a really fast long range mid, they may hit you in this back dash when you're hitting the down back, basically. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want to do it fast, you know, you're just going to get like little steps like that. We've got to maximize each back Yeah, dash. you want to maximize each back dash long strides like that. And it looks smoother that way too. Yeah, yeah like the way it looks, looks very clean. <laughs> Once you learn how to move around quickly in this game, it's a big benefit to you. Right, because as we mentioned in the first episode about the advanced zone layers, you can like back, out back dash someone and make them whiff so that you can punish them with the launcher. Exactly. And all right, so I guess the next thing we'll talk about is some character, character specific movements as mm -hmm. well. Um, you know, we talked about side steps and back dashing and forward dashing, but there are unique ways to forward dash in this game as well. And Heiachi is a Mishima character, and a couple other characters have this kind of movement as well. This is a character specific kind of movement. Heiachi, Devil Jane, even Alex, Roger, a couple King. You know, King's a little different. It's though. a little bit different, but, but in general, it's Mishima characters that are known for this wave dash. Yeah, this is called a wave dash kind of forward movement. So it's kind of like the back dash that I explained earlier, but you're kind of doing it in reverse 
forward. So <laughs> you're doing forward neutral since you have to with these characters, then down, down, forward. So when I do that, you notice that that's a single wave dash. I so, think, yeah. I'll say an easy way is maybe you're just doing forward neutral and then do like a fireball motion. Yeah, to really forward get it neutral, forward circle, forward is a kind of easy way to think about it. And you can repeat it in, in succession to get a wave dash. Right, and the key to this when you're a newbie is basically to make sure you get to neutral. Because if you just do it too fast, like kind of like you know, you just kind of an uppercut motion in other 2D games. Yeah, you can't just wiggle around Z's all day like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. So that's another way to quickly close the gap without just forward dashing. And sometimes you know you want to get a move out from that step, you know that actual movement. Mm -hmm. So this is beneficial to these characters where they have special you know movement. Right, and we won't get too character specific right now, but in general, these characters, since they're doing this wave dash animation, you'll see they're in a crowd state at the end of it. So they can either go for a high attack with their electrics, or they could go for just like some kind of mid out of the crouching animation, you know, with the wild standing attack, or they could just go for a low house sweep generally. So they have a full range of mix ups out of all of these exactly. uh, wave dashes. Yeah, and that's pretty much about it for wave dashes. Um, you know, there's another term called light dashing, but. Yeah. Light dashing? <laughs> You know, you don't really need light dashing. That doesn't look like a light dash. <laughs> it might be a light dash. <laughs> you know, it's just light dash is just a term for a really fast wave dash, but you know, you want control. You don't right. want freaking. Right, and, and generally when people are doing stuff like that, it's more just to intimidate the opponent than to exactly. actually be. So, like, you know, here we go, accurate. oh my god, he has this mix up out of this crouch dash. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, uh oh. You know. Right, and if somebody's ever doing that, just hop kick them. You know, it's just that. <laughs> okay. Or down to it. <laughs> All right, so moving on then, there's another character-specific move we can talk about. You've got uh, Paul on your team. So let's go ahead and show them some back sway, forward sway, crouch dash kind of stuff. Okay, so like as I explained earlier, how you could do back dashes with back, forward circle back, there are some characters in this game that have a back sway, like Paul, Nina, Brian, um, maybe a couple others that I'm forgetting right now, but um, you'll notice that if you do forward circle back with Paul, he'll do this little quick head nod and then he'll sway backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if you try to backdash with that kind of method, you'll get a backsway like that. So you want to be careful when you're backdashing. Right, because you can be hit during that backsway. It's not like a, yeah. the back hold back method. So in this method, for these backsway characters, you have to do it properly. You can't hit down at all. Right. So you got to do back, down, back, back when you're doing the repeated backdash. You just yeah. got to do it. See, like I messed up there, but yeah, I'm you have to be pretty accurate. Yeah. See, right now I'm getting it pretty accurately, but. It's pretty easy to mess up. Yeah, yeah and these characters that do have a backsway, they generally have moves out of it as well. So it's yes. kind of like a stance for them almost. Mm -hmm. But um, keep in mind, the whole time they're backswaying like that, you are vulnerable to attacks and you are not safe by any means. But to do backsways, it's just core circle back. Um, there is some, something called a Hayashida step. It's, you could do like core circle back, up, core circle back, up, you know. It's just a multiple core circle backs and then you could cancel the back sways or forward sways with tapping up for a side step. So. Yeah, it's really an intimidating tactic that creates a lot of space and gets your character to size up at the same time. Yeah, this, is, this term could also be like called snake dashing as well. And do we want to cover electric side step? I'm not sure what to call it. Yeah. Electric side step. <laughs> <laughs> it's like multiple rapid side steps in succession without side walking. And did you want to describe that at all, Mike? <laughs> Without just your stick. <laughs> Listen to that. I mean, like, how can you enjoy doing this all day? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. How can you? <laughs> <laughs> so I prefer not to use. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, electric side stepping. <laughs> side stepping. Right. Um, you know, this 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 method of side stepping is not as great as it used to be in the older games. Right. In the older games, like Tekken Five, it used to evade a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and it was really good. But in these games, side steps have been kind of toned down, and side stepping, like the way the hitboxes work and the way moves work in this game, you have to be a lot more specific and timing based on when you're side stepping stuff now, because a lot of things have beefier hitboxes and mm -hmm. stuff like that as well. So, and uh, really quick, did you want to talk about crouch dashing? Crouch dashing, yeah, sure. Uh, so like like um, Paul, he already has a back sway, uh, but he also has a forward sway as well. So also known as a crouch dash. Right, and um, this is a little bit different than Law's crouch dash because Law also has a crouch dash, but he doesn't have a course of a forward yeah, there's motion. Many different kind of crouch dashes in this game. As you notice, like that is still considered a crouch right. dash, even though it's one single wave dash. Mm -hmm. One by itself is just considered a crouch dash. 
So, you know, it's crashing and dashing. So, but Paul's is done differently than Hayachi's. Hayachi's is forward, neutral, down, down, forward. Paul's is just quarter circle forward. Yeah, and Laws is just holding down, down, forward, down, hold down, forward. Yeah, so it's like characters have different methods of crash dashing in this game. And it's just another means, it's, it's the same purpose as any other crash dash in this game. It's just to get in, force a mix up, you know, sometimes even evade highs, you know, crash dash it, if you time it correctly, right. you go right under a high and go, you know, and so it's like, you, you can use it to, to your benefit. Well, so. the most basic level is that there's moves that are out of these crash dashes. That, that's yeah. the well, point of them is that they're moves. They're mm -hmm. not there just for movement, it's there because you can do a, you know, like a death fist with Paul or a slide with Law. Yeah, pretty much. Or you can, you know, go in and then, oh no, it's a falling leaf, you know, so it's like, or you could go, oh, you know, you could just use it to your benefit or, you know, go for the death right. list or whatever, what have you, you know, it's whatever you want to come up with for your style of play. Cool, so I think that it covers most of the advanced movement in the game, at least character specific stuff and general stuff as well. Um, let's go ahead and talk about one of the topics that's actually really difficult for newbies and that's getting up off the ground correctly. So there's basically a bunch of different positions, which we're going to cover really shortly, and we're going to show you how to get up off the ground. 